Hey, what's up, guys? Today it's really exciting day for me, guys, because I finally got this lens. So it is the RF 800 millimeter lens. I've only tried up to 70 millimeter, so I'm not really sure if I'm gonna be good at this lens. So I'm gonna try shooting some birds um, in a sanctuary near me. But before we start, let's unbox this thing. So here it is guys. Let's open this thing. So we got here the manual, I think. Yep, manual. And this one is for the warranty. There's the lens, guys. And that's it. There's nothing else in the box. Yeah, this should be a little bit tighter, but it's loose. So hopefully there's no dust in there. So I got my R5 here, and then Fit right, and then voila. Okay, let's turn this thing on, and then turn it on. Oh, it says here, so I did not position it yet. Pull that thing, then turn. And then now I'm ready. Oh, I forgot to remove it. So the aperture is fixed. That's what they say. Let's see. Oh yeah, there's only one. Uh, the focus area is small and yeah, the aperture is only f11. So hopefully the sunny Southern California is gonna make up for it. And one thing I want to mention guys is that with this lens, yeah, do you hear that? So it has that clunky sound. So I have the RF 100 to 500 and it doesn't make that sound. It's actually really um, sturdy. But yeah, I think that's the, the price you pay with this one. Okay, let's try this thing out and see if I actually know how to shoot uh, birds with this. All right, see you in the wild and let's get busy. Okay guys, we're here in the in San Joaquin Marsh and Irvine. And yeah, let's see if this um, lens is good enough in here. But yeah, I was supposed to get the RF 100 to 500 millimeter, but it's always out of stock. I can't get my hands on it. But this one they have plenty in Amazon. So, yeah, let's try this out. So I saw this big bird flying in the, in the sky. And then it's actually just within range of my, with this lens. And man, it's so hard to get a shot. Uh, yeah, I, I need to get more practice. And I also forgot to turn on or to switch to continuous uh, high-speed shooting and uh, now I just got one shot so yeah I did not get lucky this time so maybe later yeah, this this place is really big guys um, it's actually a lot of fun taking pictures here. oh I, I see a, a lake I think a, that's a Huron hold on I think this place is really big. There's a lot of uh, birds in here, you, but you can still gotta have to walk around. It's not just gonna fly in front of you, but yeah, just walk around. It's really big in here. It's spacious. There's a lot of ponds, and I don't really know 
uh, any names of birds so I'm just gonna look it up later but yeah what I found out is that uh, shooting with a really long lens uh, yeah I got some shots with airplanes but yeah the, the hard part of flying uh, stuff like birds or planes is that you, you don't have anything to reference in that area so you kind of have to really uh, kind of scan around with your camera but yeah it's easier if it's just they're walking but yeah I think with just a few more practice I can get a hang of it but yeah the, in Southern California that is it's always sunny in here actually getting like a nice ISO of uh, 2500 and then shutter speed at around like uh, 2500 too I think but yeah it's actually doable with this lens in in here so if you're in a sunny area yeah this lens will actually do really well with uh, wild photography but yeah I'm actually surprised I'm actually loving this lens so far but uh, there are times that I, I there are like small birds in front of me I have to back out a little bit but um, it's okay and another problem that I found in here maybe I just don't know I don't know where's the bathroom so yeah this is a good way to practice holding your bladder <laughs> But yeah, maybe I could find out next time. I can still hold it, but yeah, that, that would be a good thing to know where, where it is. But at least the kids are having fun, uh, I think. Right, guys? Right? Are you guys having fun? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> you, you guys don't sound like you're having fun. Oh yeah? Okay. That's good then. Just to keep them away from tablet for, for a while in a day. So I did not see that there's actually there's actually a bathroom right here. I just did not see it because I parked on a different place, on a different spot, not here in here. There's actually no problem for bathroom, I think. Though I did not really use it. I don't know if it's really open or not. Probably open. So we're done for the day, guys. We're going home. Kids are tired and hungry. Hey. <laughs> hey. Right. So this is where I know that we can park. There's only a few parking spots in here. Um, actually, this is the second one. The first one is, yeah, right. Uh, you you see it right away when you come in here. Uh, there's one over there that way, and this is the second one. I don't know if we can actually. If you go straight, there's a, a gate, but it, I don't see like a way to pay for parking. Okay. So after going back several times to the sanctuary, we finally figured out where the main parking area. And it's actually really close to that bathroom that I showed you earlier. And it's actually a big parking lot. It's actually plenty of space to park in there. And then the one we first went to is actually, for some reason, the Tesla map led us to that place. So I don't know why, but we figured out there's actually a, another uh, entrance to that place. And I think it's going to the campus drive. But if you want to know how to get there to the main parking area, I can actually make another video just for that uh, to show you. Just leave me a comment below if you're interested. Now, going back to the camera. So I just want to mention that I'm not a professional photographer. Uh, I just do this for a hobby. I, I have a different job um, into computers. But if you are interested in what I say, I really appreciate you staying here uh, watching this video. So I had this for a few weeks already and then I went to the sanctuary few, uh, like at least four times with this lens. So the 800mm focal length is actually really challenging at first, but after a while it, I got used to it. It's really challenging uh, when shooting uh, birds in flight and or 
airplanes, there's not much objects to reference with, uh, with the main subject you're looking for. But in San Joaquin Sanctuary, uh, most of the birds are actually really distant. So there are ponds in there, they have islands, and then there's one pond that there's just so many birds that's actually nesting in there. For some reason, they, they like that pond. The birds are really far in that, in that island, that little island in there. And then the, the pictures I take is, is mostly really soft. And I don't think it's the, the fault of the focal length. It's just the it's just physics. It's just really far. And then there's uh, heat haze, and there's just too much air in between the lens and the subject. And yeah, it's just too far. What I like to take pictures with is not the birds right on, at the island, but maybe somewhere in between, um, like birds are trying to uh, catch fish. And yeah, when they're feeding, that's when I really get excited about. Uh, when taking photos of those uh, actions. So the first time I tried with this lens, it was already around 10 o'clock in the morning and the sun is actually right uh, almost above us already and the photo wasn't really that great. So we decided to come back uh, the next day and then when we came back, it was really cloudy. So the first day, it wasn't really that bad. I have a few keepers but the next day I went, it was really cloudy and no matter how I take the photo, it's just really soft. It's just, it just really bad. So yeah, I don't think it was also the, the lens that time. Um, it's probably just the weather. It's just too cloudy. Um, so I see a lot of people still taking pictures, but yeah, some of them are actually using an F4 lens and I bet they have better photos than what I had because this is 411. It was really soft already and and then given that it was really cloudy, it, it the pictures was really awful. It's hard to edit, but I'm really not good at editing. So maybe there's a way to uh, post process those pictures. So how about you guys? Uh, do you know how to process those photos, those blurry or those really soft photos? And let me know down in the comments below uh, what can I actually do with those. And if you have tried going to San Joaquin and if you have those F4 lenses, can you share your experience down in the comment below? And then the third day I went, it was around 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It was perfect. The sunlight was perfect that time. I was into uh, shooting birds in flight, so I had to put the shutter speed into uh, 2500 a second, and I still needed a, a lot of ISO. But yeah, but that time the, the photos was actually a lot better than when I had the first few days. And then the fourth day, uh, before I went, I ordered the 1.4 times extender because I, I felt like I need more range especially uh, when taking photos of those uh, birds because they're they're really distant when when you go to this place so that's why I felt like I think I really need more focal length so that's why I use the extender but I don't want to use the two times because the aperture is gonna be f22 but with the 1.4 extender yeah it still went up high F16 but I actually I was actually surprised because it's still really usable I had a chance to take a photo of a bird uh, in a perch I think it's a tohi and the photo was really still nice and I was really surprised I thought it's gonna be really soft but it, it turns out it's actually really usable yeah, with this lens, it's actually really great if you can get the subject really closer to you. So talking about the focus area of this lens, so in full frame mode, the focus area is narrow. It's like almost half the screen, uh, but at the center. But if you're gonna shoot in crop mode, the focus area is gonna be a little bit wider. It's actually nicer to shoot with. But yeah, you're just gonna get less resolution that way. 
also using an extender with this one it doesn't really change the focus area too it's just still the same with or without the 1.4 extender i don't know with the two times extender if it's gonna change the focus area so by the way using the 1.4 extender it doesn't really make the distant subjects uh, sharper it's still really soft now in san joaquin uh, most of the birds are actually really far from you so if you're gonna use this lens it's not gonna be much of a problem but there are times that the bird is actually right next to the trail and then it's really hard to take photo with this lens because you need like a minimum of almost 20 uh, feet composing with this lens it's really hard because the focus area in full frame is really narrow and then you have to back out but if you want to uh, picture in crop mode yeah the focus area is going to be a little bit wider but you're going to be zoom in a little bit more so it's not really a pleasant experience when your subject is really really close or like around six meters yeah this lens is not really that versatile so yeah buying this lens you have you have to manage your expectation now talking about the weight oh man this lens is really light you don't need a tripod or a monopod uh, to use this lens in my opinion it's really light yeah i have a small arm it's not really that big i'm not really that strong but i actually don't have any problem with the weight with this one i can uh, shoot with this lens all day so who's this lens for i think if you're in a budget you still get really great photos with this uh, lens 800 millimeter i think it's a it's a really a bargain and you just have to manage your expectations like the minimum focusing distance the aperture um, don't expect that you're gonna take sharp photos if the subject is really really far um, you have to still get closer to the subject because of the so many factors to consider with like especially with heat haze yeah that one is is gonna turn your photos really soft so yeah i highly recommend this one so i have mentioned that i bought the rf 100 to 500 already um, so I got lucky that the lens went available uh, for a short period of time and I'm one of those lucky guys who, who got it. Yeah guys, if I did not get the RF 100-500 to lens, I would still be really happy with this lens. This is actually a really fun lens to use with, um, especially for the price. So this is just really a fun lens to use. Um, I'm really sad to let this go. Unfortunately, I just don't have the budget to have both lenses, uh, the white and this lens. Um, but I'm really happy I got the RF 100 to 500. So if you are interested of what I think about the RF 100 to 500 lens, I will be posting that video in the coming days. So hopefully you subscribe. So how about you guys? What lens do you have for your EOS R5? Or what camera do you have? Or, and what lens do you have? And is it time to upgrade or you're satisfied with your lens? What do you think guys? Leave your comments down below. So that's it for this video guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this video helpful. Stay safe and busy and I will see you in the next one.